Today we will be talking about the top 13 mysteries in Naruto that remains unsolved ever after all these years. Let's start with one of the most popular mystery. Why did Neji not use his taijutsu to save both himself and Naruto? Neji is a master of using his dojutsu, whipping out the patented 8 trigrams palms revolving heaven technique without any issues whatsoever. However, it seems he apparently forgot about this move when he rushed in to save Naruto during the war arc. This led to a heartbreaking moment as Neji sacrificed himself. Although some people found this moment to be pretty contrived. To this day, fans aren't convinced that a genius like Neji simply didn't have the time to pull this technique off and save everyone without losing his life. How are the Onbu so ridiculously ineffective? The Onbu takes on the role of the elite ninja force that guards the hidden leaf village and carries out many sensitive operations. They are often portrayed as highly skilled and deadly operatives, with hidden leaf legends like Itachi and Kakashi being a part of this group. However, when push comes to shove, they seem to be consistently ineffective in actually protecting the village or its important figures. This problem became so prevalent that most fans now consider them to be a joke, as opposed to a group of shinobi who should be feared for their powers. What in the world happened to Sakura's Genjutsu powers? Sakura is a character with a ton of promise who barely accomplished anything as the series went on, leading to many fans hating her despite the fault mainly lying with Kishimoto. Early on, it was revealed that she had a natural affinity towards Genjutsu, leading to many fans believing that she would become a master of illusions in her own right. However, as the story went on, Sakura ended up becoming a carbon copy of Tsunade instead of developing unique Genjutsu powers of her own. It's the first instance of Kishimoto neglecting her character, something that would become common practice as the series went on. Why Itachi never realized that his plan to save Sasuke would backfire. For decades, Sasuke believed that Itachi killed everyone in his clan for no rhyme or reason, setting him down a path of vengeance as he got stronger to take out his brother once and for all. However, it turned out that Itachi was told by the elders of the village to take out the Uchiha clan with this powerful shinobi requesting for Sasuke to be spared. Ultimately, Itachi's master plan to save Sasuke from the darkness of the Uchiha clan backfired massively when Sasuke became consumed with hatred after this revelation and sought to destroy Konoha instead. It remains a mystery why Itachi did not anticipate this outcome, especially since he's meant to be a pretty smart shinobi. The Chunin exam's too dangerous. Given that most of its participants are kids, the Chunin exam are a highly dangerous event in which young ninja are placed in life-threatening situations where they can potentially get mortally injured. The fact that a diabolical figure like Orochimaru managed to infiltrate these exams is proof enough of just how poor the security here really was. These events raise some serious questions about the wisdom of allowing children to participate in such a deadly competition in the first place. Surely the adults responsible for the tune-in exams shouldn't be so indifferent to these risks. Why are the Jinchuriki ostracized if they house such destructive power? The Jinchuriki are people with the power of the tailed beast sealed within their bodies. These tragic figures are reviled by their village, being hailed as omens of disaster that remind people of the destruction these beasts caused in the past. However, it should be pretty logical that the Jinchuriki should be treated with love so that they strive to protect the village instead of resenting it. What's stopping any person from losing their cool and unleashing this beast as a form of revenge for all the trauma they had to endure? Who killed Hashirama in battle? The death of Hashirama is shrouded in mystery. He's one of the most powerful shinobi of all time, being able to best an imposing shinobi like Madara and fostering a level of peace in the ninja world that was previously unheard of. However, instead of dying of natural causes, it's stated that Hashirama lost his life during one of the many battles he took part in. This seems hard to believe, especially when the identity of the man who supposedly killed someone as legendary as him hasn't even been revealed. Why did Lord Jashin become a thing of the past along with Hidan? Hidan is one of the most diabolical antagonists in Naruto's history, with his murderous nature causing Asuma's death. Watching Shikamaru gain the will of fire and give Hidan an unceremonious live burial made for one of the best moments in the entire anime. However, the fact that other followers of Lord Jashin never bothered to contact their comrade or avenge him is rather odd, 
After all, a group of immortal enemies would be quite tough indeed. And it's possible that the struggle of writing such a battle caused Kishimoto to drop the fervor around Lord Yashin altogether. What was the illness that caused Itachi to lose his strength? During his battle with Sasuke, it's shown just how badly Itachi was being affected by his illness. This caused his reflexes to become slower, leading to him being damaged by attacks that he could have easily avoided. It's a shame that Naruto never reveals exactly what this illness was, choosing to leave this ailment completely shrouded in mystery. After all, it's only a given that fans would be interested in the details of a disease so potent that even Itachi couldn't deal with it. Obito's Eye of the Moon plan is beyond stupid. Obito's plan was to create a reality where humans would forsake their free will and get entrapped in a powerful genjutsu. This illusion would work as an infinite dream to remove any conflict present in the world and ensure that mankind wouldn't destroy themselves. But the core concept of this plan is inherently flawed from the onset. There's one simple question that can be asked which will completely derail the plan. How will Obito ensure the survival of the human race if they aren't able to consummate. After all, if these people are captured in this genjutsu, then they'll be unable to perform this basic task, which will inevitably lead to the demise of humanity. Hagoromo ignored Hashirama and Madara, but helped Naruto and Sasuke. Hagoromo was the father of Indra and Ashura, who got into a brotherly conflict since Ashura preached peace while Indra was consumed by hate. The spirits of these brothers were reincarnated in Hashirama and Madara, and later on in Naruto and Sasuke. However, when Kaguya comes back during the Fourth Shinobi World War, Hagoromo comes out of nowhere and provides Naruto and Sasuke with the power required to defeat her. This begs the question, why did Hagoromo not interfere in the initial battle between Hashirama and Madara? After all, the First Shinobi World War was also a rather serious affair, obviously and tons of casualties could have been avoided if Hagoromo had interfered in this war beforehand. It's obvious that Hagoromo's appearance was just so that Naruto and Sasuke could gain massive power near the end of the series. Orochimaru could have used the Shinigami mask to regain the use of his arms. The battle between the third and Orochimaru during the Chunin exam arc was one of the fiercest battles in Naruto. They pretty much set the tone for the epic battles of the series. The aftermath of the battle involved the death of the third and the loss of Orochimaru's arms, which put the latter in one of the most debilitating conditions he'd ever been in. However, it's later revealed that there's a Shinigami mask in the Uzumaki clan's temple that could be used to release the spirits that are captured by the dead demon-consuming seal. Orochimaru used this mask to regain the ability to use hand signs, which implies that he knew how to restore his arms all this time. It's stupid how long it took for him to do so in the first place. Kaguya's return is completely shoehorned. The concept of Kaguya Otsutsuki coming back as the ultimate villain near the end of the Fourth Shinobi World War is certainly an epic way to set the stage for the final battle against evil. After all, the way she's built up certainly makes her look like an imposing figure, even though this backstory is delivered somewhat hastily. However, the plan to bring her back to life is just hopelessly convoluted. Basically, Kaguya left her evil aura in the Black Zetsu and relied on an absolute crapload of stuff to somehow fall perfectly into place so that her reincarnation would be possible. Even capturing the tailed beasts was something that the Akatsuki lucked into, and at the end of the day it can be safely said that Kishimoto just wanted an excuse to bring back this figure as the final opponent for both Naruto and Sasuke. With this, I have covered all 13 mysteries Naruto that remains unsolved ever after all these years. If you know the resin behind any of these mysteries, feel free to drop a comment. And as always, this is Verse Tuba, signing off. <laughs> what a failure.